So, stuck. Please listen, eh? last topic of your A2 and something new. Right? Uh, first time I did astronomy to Cambridge. Uh, in Excel, ID, all they do this, that this for a long period of time. Right? Cambridge was, I think, 20, away, 20 years before they had, had astronomy as an option paper and then they will totally remove it, they bring it back. Okay. So, We're going to discuss these three about astronomy. Right? We're going to talk about something called standard candles. Uh, standard candles. Candles means, uh, you know, candles. So, standard candles, candles for the stars. Eh? One star will be selected as a standard for that group. Uh, we will discuss about that. Eh? When we talk about standard candles, it will be, which is, will be used to find the distance of the stars. Eh? And second, Stella really, Stella, Stella is again a special name for, for stars eh, in astronomy. Eh. And finally, we talk about Abdul's law, uh, one of the scientists who uh, very famous in astronomy. He came out with, with, his, with his data, he came out with his law, Abdul's law, which later the feedback theory was created. Right. Okay. So first we talk about standard candles. Eh? What is meant by standard candles? So standard candles. So yeah, first is the question. Eh? Is just the distance of a star by looking at its brightness? Actually, uh, can. Yeah, but you need some other information. If it's very brighter, what is it? 
close to open. Of course, it's closer, right? But with the one assumption, if you have two stars, one is very bright, the other one is less bright. Uh, which one further? You might predict. You might predict the less bright space further, right? Like a uh, light bulb, you have a light bulb here in the room. When you move further away, what happens to the brightness of the light bulb? It decreases, right? Okay. So when you see two stars and one star is brighter and another one is less brighter, we will predict that the less brighter one is more further. But with one assumption, what's the assumption? The both star power is the same. Okay. The both star gives up the brightness. The original brightness of the two stars is the same. Okay, we do one assumption. Okay, okay so yeah, possible. Okay. So first, party something new will be introduced in astrophysics is called luminosity. Okay. Uh, what is luminosity? A star will have its own luminosity. Luminosity means power. That's all. Okay. Another name for power. Okay. What is the power of a light bulb? Fifty watts. For the star, we never say, we never use the term power, we use, what is the luminosity of the star? Okay? So, another name, huh? but it's actually power. What is luminosity? Power of the star. Okay? How much of power released by the star? It's luminosity. Huh? Yeah, the total radiant energy emitted per unit time. Power of the star. Okay? Luminosity. Okay? Remember the definition. Huh? First definition. What is meant by luminous? Yeah. Uh, more bigger the star, more greater the surface temperature of the star, you will have a higher luminosity. Yeah. Power of stars luminous. Okay. okay, what's the unit? Of course, you need the power of what? Right? What is the power of the luminosity? Eh? So, unit should be what? Eh? Okay, standard candles. What is standard candle? It's called standard candle. Astronomical object which has a known luminosity due to a specific quality possessed by that class of object. Standard candle is a, is a particular star which which no luminosity. We know what is the luminosity of that star. Okay. Uh, they did some experiment, get collect data, they are able to find the luminosity of the star. Okay. How it's very theoretical, but uh, we won't be revealed how they got the luminosity. Eh? So some stars, luminosity we are able to find if it's very bright, if it, if it seems very bright. Okay? So what is standard candle in astronomy? Is the is the stars which know luminosity? Eh? It's called standard candle. Okay? In a group of stars, you might have trillions of stars. Not all going to be very bright. Some will be very, very bright. Okay? Uh, then the very bright stars will select as a standard candle. Okay? Standard candle. Huh? Candle for that for, uh, for that galaxy. Huh? He is going to be like the captain to reveal the how far away the galaxy is. Okay? Is is like representing that that galaxy uh, uh, for us by human. We don't have much. Uh, we don't have much technology. We investigate each and every one because the amount of brightness reached the Earth is so so minimal. Uh, only some stars keep very high brightness. So we use that 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 brightness, that luminosity, to calculate the how far away. Okay. So yeah, what is the use of standard candles to find the how far the, like the particular galaxy is away from the Earth. Okay? We use the uh, luminosity value to calculate the distance. Okay? okay, now let's we go in depth how distance can be calculated. Eh? Yeah, so as I said, the last one. Astronomer can determine the distance of the standard candle by measuring the 
the intensity of the light coming and radiation arriving at the earth. This is different. Intensity arriving at the earth is different from the luminosity. Uh, you know, last time wave, wave topic we learned, right? Wave on a light, light bulb, we stand about 2 meter away. What is the intensity of the light source when it's 2 meter away? What formula do you use? What is the intensity formula? Power over area, right? The power of what? Power of the light bulb over the which area you use? The area of the sphere of the 2 meter, right? You have the power set. A spread for the sphere of 2 meters, right? The same concept used here. Now, the center is not like Papa, center is the star. You are at the Earth, okay? So, what is the intensity you receive from that star? So, power over area. But now the power replaces what? Something called luminosity. So, luminosity of that star divided by the, the area, uh, the area, the how far away are the area of the express is the intensity. Okay. So scientists are able to find two values. They can able to find luminosity for a particular star and they can find the intensity reached at the surface. By using these two values, they can find the distance. How far away the star. You can find the distance, right? Intensity is equal to what? Power over area. Now for the star, intensity is equal to what? Luminosity over the area. Luminosity you can find uh, from the star particular technique. Uh, intensity they can find, so they can find the distance. Okay, they can find the distance, how far away the star. Okay, the same concept as the light bulb and you. Okay. okay, let's go in depth about it, how to find the distance. Eh? But before that, example of standard candlesticks. Eh? Which stars act as a standard candle? Okay. The star have to be very bright uh, from our from the telescope when they view. Okay, the first one they call uh, something special name uh, called Cephe variable star. Cephe. Uh, uh, this this there are many types of stars, uh, binary stars moving around to each other. Uh, Cephe star. If it's star, it's a star that like blinks, like brightness increases and decreases periodically. Okay, so a type of star. Huh? So this star, a type of pulsating star. Uh, pulsating star which increases and decreases the brightness over a set of time or period. Become very bright and get dimmer. Very bright and get dimmer. Uh, it's a type of star, a pulsating star. Huh? A specific variable star. Found in most of the galaxies. There'll be one of the, the few stars are C stars. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, scientists get to know that the variation of the brightness is uh, the period eh? is well linked to the luminosity. The period of the variation was related to the average luminosity of the star. I go for a summary. Eh? By checking the period of the, the brightness goes down, it seems the, the scientist is able to find the luminosity of the star. Okay. The star, the distance could be uh, that's later of the period. Okay, before we go to this, I show the graph eh, about the star, eh, the, how the brightness change. Okay, from this slide, just remember what is the variable star means. As a pulsating star where the intensity varies periodic periodically. Okay. So this this is how the brightness variation was related to the average luminous scale. So the star, what you call the, the brightness that changes periodically with a certain period. By using this information, the period information, they say they're able to find the average luminosity of the star. Okay. So the luminosity of star can be obtained for specific star, eh? specific uh, type of stars. Okay? So not all stars you can get luminous. This one they say from by, by measuring the period, they have a certain formula. They can calculate the average luminosity of the star. Okay? What is luminosity? 
the amount of power used by the sum. Okay. So you know luminosity. You can find luminosity of that CP star. Okay. So of trillions of stars, and we select one CP star of that galaxy. We know that we the luminosity of the star. Then uh, we get the brightness we receive here. We use that too to find the distance. Okay. Okay. So that one. Uh, that's not only one act as a standard candle. We have another one. Uh, type one A supernova. Make name all fancy or unit. A lot of supernova. What is supernova? Uh, explosion of star. Eh? Uh, this happened for a big star. Eh? You know, like what happened to our star? Hydrogen is merged from become helium. For a big star, the helium will merge to form heavy particle. Yeah, but at a surface, if you if you go for our star, full of hydrogen. Okay, at the core is helium. Core is helium because where the fusion happens at the core. <coughs> Why the fusion happens at the core? High pressure, high temperature. So core will experience the fusion. The fusion energy will release to the space, reaching us. Yeah. So at the star, the core becomes more denser. Yeah. For big stars like uh, maybe 20 or 30 times than our uh, our star, the core helium will convert to more more massive particle, and the surface is still hydrogen. You know? Yeah. So what happened? The core has a very huge gravity. Gravity builds up stronger. So what happened? There will be a moment where the, the, the core will collapse because of strong gravity. And the hydrogen, right, because it's lighter, then move away. Okay? A splitting happened. Sudden, sudden split happened. Okay? When this sudden split happens, the, the core is crushing down to the center, and the hydrogen atom is moving away. And this movement causes a, a kind of an explosion okay, called supernova. Okay, suddenly, the, the star you can see suddenly explodes. Okay. Uh, so far, it happens in outer space. Okay. It won't happen to our sun. Our sun is quite small. Okay. It won't go for supernova. Big stars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so when it bursts, when it bursts, the entire galaxy becomes bright. Okay. A very huge brightness. But that brightness happens just for a short period of time. And and our scientists able to capture that brightness, again, they can use, use that, uh, what you call data, to calculate the luminosity of that particular supernova. Okay. So what is supernova star implode, implode rapidly towards the end of their life and scatter matter and energy out to up into space. Okay. A big star suddenly become a smaller car, smaller, smaller size. Okay, the hydrogen just escaped. Okay. Towards the end of uh, it's, it's, it's called the it's called the end of the star. Eh? Uh, the core won't uh, won't do fusion anymore. Okay. So yeah, supernova. Eh? Okay, this implosion even can be brighter than the galaxy itself. Eh? The explosion. So maybe, yeah. So the luminosity of the star at that time implosion always the same. Okay. So from the astronomer can estimate the star's distance from the Earth. Yeah. We need the luminosity. To get the luminosity, the star has to be very bright. Okay. Once you got luminosity, we get the intensity here on the Earth. That two information, as I said, you can find the distance. Yeah. Uh, we will go in depth how to find the distance. So, uh, before that, there is uh, YouTube also, they have the video of explosion of the star, the supernova. They use telescope, uh, maybe, let's see. Okay. What if I told you, it appears in harmonic oh, dimensions are what we use to get intense results like this drop?
can check all of these to know what. So again, one round. example of supernova. So, so these two are standard candles to find this. And CP star and uh, supernova. Okay. CP star is periodical uh, pulse setting star. Okay? It happens every every time, every moment. Supernova only happens seasonal. We don't know when the star will die. Okay? They have to they have to be patient, the astronomers have to be patient to check every part of the stars suddenly is, is this event can be captured okay short period of time okay okay so this called standard candles okay? so what is standard candles uh the stars with which which no luminosity okay no luminosity is called standard candles okay okay now let's go how to find the distance okay? So luminosity and radiant flux density, how they relate it. Uh, indirectly, as I told you, you learned this already. Uh, the light bulb and you. Okay. The power in that formula is the luminosity. Okay. The intensity in that formula is radiant flux density. Okay. New name flux, but same concept. Okay. So luminosity is the power of the star. Radiant flux density is actually the intensity of the light we receive eh? so what is okay before that what is the light here anyone what is the light here means? one light here time taken uh, the distance traveled by light in one year okay it's called one light years okay so how do you find one light years one light years speed equals to distance over time so distance is speed times time. Speed is speed of light times uh, of course one second. Eh? Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, the time you have put one year. Eh? Time you have put one year. So speed is speed of light. You get the distance traveled by the light in one year. Okay. So what is the light year? Of course, as I told you, the distance traveled by a light in vacuum in one year. Eh? So it's 9.5 times 10 power 15 meter. So how do you get it? Speed times one year, right? In seconds, you get this value. Of course, we know the fastest uh, uh, element, of course, light. And uh, so for stars, because all will be like this, right? Very far away. Uh, So yeah, uh, some stars, some gap stars, uh, all are standard candles. Distance, right? uh, we don't know yet how to find yet. First, temperature surface also we haven't discussed yet. Yet, okay, first, luminosity, uh, luminosity is found by by using these standard candles, okay? standard candles. Okay. Okay, so this is how they related. Okay, total power. So, uh, this formula. Uh, we emerge from your way by just with a different name, that's all. Uh, last time you see intensity equals to power over area. Right? Uh, intensity is one. For for planet is a flux, a radiant flux density, so flux, eh? same as intensity. What is the intensity formula? A unit, watt per meter square, right? Yeah. So flux also watt per meter square. Eh? And uh, power of luminosity. Eh? 
all those dice all the way. So the real speed of the power radiated by the star, the radiant flux density, the radiant power passing normally through a surface area, per, uh, surface per unit area. Okay. The amount of power passing normally through per, per unit area. Okay. So since the luminosity is known for the standard candles, yeah. City star and uh, supernova. The distance can be calculated by using this equation. This is equation called uh, inverse uh, square law. Eh? The flux is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Okay. You know this right there. Eh? Oh, further the star. Oh, further the star. Flux will be small, okay. Of course, we will get a big distance to square. Okay, so yeah. So the one I told you, uh, the same formula, uh, power of the star or the surface of the heat. Uh, the same information, okay. Okay, so by assuming the luminosity is constant, uh, the flux density obeys inverse square law with the distance. Okay? Okay, but this method, of course, got a lot of problems, right? Uh, three problems using this method to find the distance. The distance become sometimes not accurate because of these three reasons. First, difficulty determining the class of stars. We don't know the the the, the standard candle you use is representing which which galaxy. The galaxy are overlapping sometimes when you view. Right? We don't know uh, that CP size of belongs to which. Which galaxy is it in the same group or a different group? Okay. Second, the most dominant one in this group. The, all the standard candle uh, style of calculation, the distance is we assuming the luminosity is, is constant. Uh, but in reality, different stars in the group, in that group, we take one standard candle. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that, that brightness, that luminosity belongs to all the stars. Okay. Some stars might have different luminosity. Yeah. How much the power released by the star depends on what factor? We haven't discussed that, that but what do you think? Is, this, is it all star going to be seen, we give up same power? No, right? It depends on what factor. It depends on the surface temperature of the star. How 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 much temperature the star possesses? Yeah. And depends on the size of the star. Yeah. So taking luminosity, say, uh, yeah, the luminosity may not be the same. So the distance they mentioned might be wrong. Yeah. And of course, the third factor also quite dominant. Yeah? The star, the, the the flux we receive, the flux is we assuming in between is vacuum. Okay, between vacuum. So we get the the brightness. But sometimes, of course, we have some. Uh, gas particles in between can absorb the, the brightness. So the amount of light reaching the earth might be lesser. So due to absorption, the the intensity we receive can be affected. Right? How do you find the distance? Distance is dependent on the luminosity and the flux. Right? The two data is is unreliable, right? the distance is strong, right? Yeah. Luminosity, yes, doing assumption all the stars have the same luminosity, but in reality, not necessarily same. Eh? So, luminosity value there is uncertainty. Flux also got problem, the one we receive because it might be absorbed by the, some gas and dust in between. Okay? 
this call effect, this, this all uh, uncertainty affects the distance they measure. So as you go on, the distance they got is actually an approximate value of the star with our current technology. Okay. So this is the uh, difficulty in measuring by using a standard candles. Okay. Okay, one question from what you learned so far. Okay, so what is it? Flux equals to uh, 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 luminosity over the four pi d square. Uh, the d is what? The d is the distance between the star and the earth. Okay, that's the difference, right? Okay. So first question. You will try the radius of the sun, our star. Okay? Radius of the sun is found to be that much. And it has a luminosity of 3.83 by 10 power of 36 watts. That's the power of our star sun. The orbital radius of the Earth is 1.5 by 10 power of 11. Calculate the radius flux intensity at the surface of the sun and at the position of the Earth. Find the flux, radiant flux intensity. Like your own knowledge, intensity, all right? Yeah, for the intensity at the surface of the sun and at the surface of the earth. Of course, the flux, will, in the flux intensity will be higher at the surface of the sun, right? How do you find intensity? Uh, the luminosity yeah, divided by the, the area expressed, right? Yeah. Complete, complete, come on. Flux equals to luminosity over 4 pi d squared. Uh, 4 pi d squared. D is the, the distance uh, where you want to find the flux. Uh, Okay, so use this formula. Huh? So use this formula. Yes. So you have to use this formula. Flux equals to L for pi d squared. Huh? Yeah. So luminosity is the power of the star. Huh? So you got two answers, right? You got these two. What you got? Huh? So flux at the surface is the, the radius of the sun, huh? uh, the luminosity of the sun. Oh, yeah. you get this, this, uh, this uh, intensity at the surface of the sun. Okay. Like when we get closer, the intensity, right? right? Huh? The area gets smaller. Huh? Yeah, then. Okay, the radiant flux in the surface of the sun. So yeah, the face is uh, you can do this using the inverse square law and use the mass square law. So I uh, inversely proportional to d squared to find the second answer. Yeah. You know f where the surface. What is the f at the new distance? New distance is 1.5 times and power eight times. Yeah. So calculate the radium flux intensity is with positive. We can do this using a inverse square law f proportional to 1 over d squared. Eh? So the distance increases by a factor of this, then you get this flux. Eh? So the flux the distance of the Yeah? This is the orbital radius. Orbital radius from the center of the sun to the earth. Actually, Orbital radius, center of the sun to the center of the earth. Eh? So I need to minus the radius of the earth. Right? The radius of the earth is not provided. So negligible, I think, for that distance. Or you can certainly, you don't want to use this universe square law, certainly you can use this formula as we go. Luminosity, you know already. Eh? Oh. Let me just put the 
the radius uh, the distance between the sun and the earth. I think you have that. Okay, so flux what per meter square, same as intensity. Huh? Okay, any questions so far? Okay, yeah. okay another one? Figure out what are you doing? The radial flux intensity measured at the earth from a specific variable star in Andromeda uh, galaxy. 1.4 times 10 power negative 16 watts per meter square. So this is the flux intensity, uh, flux one you see from that specific star from that particular galaxy. So the luminosity of the star is thought to be 1 times 10 power 20. Uh, they obtain from the period of its uh, pulse setting uh, brightness. Yeah. Normally the luminosity will be given. Yeah. How the distance of the star? How far away the star from, from Earth? So the same formula, right? Uh -huh. So flux intensity is equal to luminosity divided by the uh, 4 pi d squared. Uh -huh. So we can find the distance of that star from, from Earth. Okay. Roughly calculate, rough calculation, of course, answers after this to get the idea. So you got this right. Eh? Yes, we are the formula and eh, get the D. This is equal to 2.5 million. Like this. Yes, yeah. Another one. Explain how a standard candle can be used to determine the distance of a star. So what are the steps you do? First, you find what? You find the luminosity of the uh, standard candles. Yeah. Either CP star or supernova. Yeah. After you get your luminosity, what do you do? You find the flux intensity, the receive by the earth of that star. Then use the inverse square law to get your answer. Yeah. This is what should be in your mind, right? Yeah. So use a standard candle from that uh, galaxy. Radiation flux intensity is measured at the earth. They use inverse square law. Flux equals to uh, luminosity over the 4 pi d squared to get the distance. Yeah. But is it accurate? Not really accurate. Eh? Our technology is not that much yet, still, eh? in terms of astronomy. Eh? Still, we need uh, good uh, telescope, uh, good technique. Uh, yeah. We need to have a spaceship, but we don't have much fuel eh, to go wrong. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first part finding the distance of the star by using standard candle. There are many, many. Uh, there are three different uh, ways of finding distance of star. Uh, this is the intermediate star, stars in an intermediate distance. Eh? But the one nearest one, there is another technique called trigonometric parallax. Eh? Uh, not in your syllabus. They never ask you ask you to teach that. The intermediate one, we use uh, standard candle. Further away, eh? about 100 light years, uh, we can use standard candle. If beyond that, very far away, uh, we use another method uh, by using the Hubble zone. Uh, that we will be discussing after this. Uh, because why this technique cannot be used for a very far, far, very far away stars? 
what you can use this thing and this, uh, this technique. Very far away. The brightness, even the CP star brightness, also not really bright. Okay, so we cannot we cannot find the luminosity. So we can't find the distance. Eh? Okay. So now uh, we go in depth about uh, luminosity, the size of the stars. How to find the size of the stars? Uh, is there any idea? Can we find the, how big is the star? The the, the, the we are observing. Okay. So stellar radius, eh? the size of the star. To find the size of the stars, uh, two laws. Uh, we based on two laws. Uh, we 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 use two laws to find the size of the star. The first law is called uh, Wien's uh, displacement law. Uh, uh, this law helps us to find the size of the star. How big is the star? Okay. This Wien's law is based on black body, black body radiation. You heard of black body radiation? Uh, black body is a but all I want to learn Black body is a good emitter, right? Good emitter and good absorb. Okay, it emits all the radi radiation energy perfectly and it absorbs. It's a good absorber, perfect absorber. Okay. So the Wien's displacement law they say that when when something a hot body okay, releases the radiant energy, okay, the energy comes out, the radiant energy on hand. Uh, when the radiant energy comes out from the body, uh, EM radiation is com coming out. Okay? So each EM radiation has its own wavelength. Okay? The wavelength is in the range. Okay? When a radiant body like sun, uh, our sun when emitted uh, radiant energy, so lots of different wavelengths reaching us. Visible light, uh, microwave, got lots of waves reaching us. Uh. So, so how, what type of wavelength is going to send us, it depends on the Actually, it depends on the temperature of the sun. Okay, the temperature of the sun is very high. Okay, let's say different star, uh, different star. The temperature is more higher than our star. Okay, that that if the star has a greater temperature, which is possible to release a, uh, a wavelength which is more shorter than the visible light. Okay, you know the from gamma to radio, right? Uh, more more greater the temperature of the star, the wavelength it emits going to shift towards the gamma. Okay. We don't have any stars so far releasing gamma. Eh? Actually, got eh, not gamma yet. Yes. Our star not really gamma or X-ray. Our star quite small. Most of the time, it's visible light. Eh? So, so we are now talking about the temperature and uh, we talk it related to black body. Eh? It's based on black body radiation. Perfect emitter absorber. Okay. So based on this uh, discovery from black body, he found that. From black body, eh? this is only for black body. From black body, the wavelength and its peak intensity of radiation is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature. What is, what is this? Eh? What is this color? He, he did research about black body. Eh? He research about black body. He, he, know, he knows that any 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 radiation energy comes up from the body, so it's dependent to the temperature of that body. Okay. So he, 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 he obtained all the wavelength released by that body, he plot a graph, and he found that he created a link. The, link. the link he told that is the, he able to find the peak wavelength okay, for that particular temperature. So he found that the peak intensity of radiation is inversely proportional to the temperature. The peak intensity is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature. Intensity. When the temperature is low, the temperature is low, uh, the peak intensity is radiation inversely proportional to its absolute temperature. Uh, lambda is inversely proportional to the temperature, right? Intensity. Yeah. So this is what the related lamp. Yeah. Uh, intensity of radiation. Uh, 
greater the temperature, okay, the thick vapor is found to be shorter. Okay. The surface give up greater temperature, surface means the, the thick vapor in the is shorter. Actually, intensity is related to energy, right? Energy is in terms of photons, each, each, each C or lambda. Yeah. So, so they found big intensity, big temperature means small wave. Sorry. Hold on. Eh? Sorry. This is the graph, your case. Greater the intensity, greater the temperature. So this is the graph you okay. uh, This graph is uh, this is the wavelength emitted from that body surface. Uh, this is the surface temperature of that body. Uh, when the surface temperature of the body rises, the surface temperature of the body rises. Uh, the peak wavelength it emits. The peak wavelength, uh, of course, it emits a range of wavelength. The peak wavelength it emits uh, becomes shorter. Okay. So, in other words, what we already can see, the the lambda, uh, the peak, the peak wavelength, okay, uh, produced by the, the black body is inversely proportional to the surface temperature. Okay. Depending on surface temperature, only for black body. Okay. So, you want to release you want to release a more shorter wavelength, you must keep the, the, the surface must have more higher temperature. Higher temperature, you release a, even a shorter wavelength. Okay. Intensity basis, wavelength. Okay. So, so remember this. So you can state this Arvind's displacement law. Eh? Lambda lambda is inversely proportional to the surface temperature. So lambda t is found to be constant. Okay. Uh, this constant value will be given to your exam. Eh? So from this graph, remember the only thing you have to remember for a black body, the maximum wavelength release must be proportional to the, the temperature of the surface. Okay. So, can you find the can we find the temperature of any star emitted? By using this law, lambda t is constant. So the peak wavelength of that star we know. Then we can find the surface temperature of that star. But now to find the peak wavelength, of course, they have to get the temperature like our sun. They have to get all the EM radiation received from the graph. When they can use the from the graph, they find the peak wavelength. They can get the peak wavelength. Where the peak wavelength happens. Okay? So lambda peak, they know. Okay, from the receiving uh, EM radiation. Then lambda t is a constant according to Green's law. So the surface temperature star can be okay. okay. But one assumption, what's the assumption? This is for black body. So what is the assumption? The sun is assumed to be a black body. Perfect emitter. Okay. So another problem on that. Sun not really a, not to say it's a perfect emitter. Not give up all the radiation. Okay. So again, assumption by assuming uh, the star as a black body, then the Vian's law is used. Lambda t is constant, so you find the surface temperature of the star. Okay. For example, they ask, what is the assumption made for Vian's law? Uh, the star is a uh, assumed as a black body. What is meant by black body? Perfect emitter. Absorb, 
Okay, class. So that's the today lesson. Uh, I don't want to go tap. You can read it later. Uh, we will. After wind law, we will go to the finding the size of the star. Right. Okay. So what you learn today? You just learn about the first part. Uh, standard candle. Okay. Yeah. So just standard candle. Okay. Okay. Let's start. Intensity there. Yeah. 